I paid a total of £69, which equates to $86 for a broken Xbox One X. The eBay listing states that it was refurbished a few months ago and had a new hard drive. It was working fine, but now there's no image going to the TV. At current eBay prices, they seem to be going for around about £110. If I can get this fixed, it should be a nice little profit. I burnt myself on stream the other day with the, uh, with the soldering iron. Look at that. Anyway, enough of my bad soldering skills. Let's give this a test just to make sure Sure that it powers on. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay specialise in custom printed circuit boards and also offer services such as CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding. PCBWay pride themselves on fair pricing, on time shipping and 24 hours customer service. Use the link in the description to sign up to PCBWay and receive a $5 welcome bonus. Now back to the video. I've just lifted it up and prior to turning it on, listen to this. There seems to be some rattling. This makes me very scared. Right, let's turn this on. I know what you guys are thinking. Joey, are you sunburnt again? Yes, I am. Here we go. We get a beep and the button comes on. That's good. That's what we like to see. We haven't been missold yet. We don't have any display whatsoever. No glitching, nothing like that. Originally, I thought I'd be buying this and it might be the retimer again for like the fourth console in a row. But no image here at all has got me a little bit worried. I'm just going to leave the Xbox to run and see if it turns off. If that's the case, it might indicate a bad hard drive. I really hope that's not the case. I'm now just trying to hard reset. See if I can pull up anything on the screen now by holding down the eject, the sync and the on button with my Spider-Man hands. It's not going to second or third beep, so usually if you, if you do the uh, the three button method you get a beep, a second beep and then a third beep and I'm not getting to that second or third beep. I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to get the hard drive out and I'm going to test it on the, on the PC to make sure that the hard drive is actually healthy. Let's do that. So, let's get this case off. And here we have it. The hard drive should be under the disk drive which is located on this side of the console here. And what I will say is that this is definitely a smoker's console. Look at the colour. Look at the state of this, look. All that smoke. This is what happens when you smoke around your consoles. I think I've also found what was rattling inside, which is this bit of plastic. It's like a standoff bit of plastic. Here's the hard drive itself with a bit of dust. I'm gonna take this out and see what the situation is. Okay, so after loading it into my PC, I can see on disk number seven, it is being recognized. Out of one terabyte, you can see that the user content is taking up a 780 gig and we have about 22 gig left. I'm gonna check crystal disk as well, just to see if it's a healthy drive. It looks like it's a good healthy drive. So this is the drive here, disk seven, and I'm pretty sure the ST stands for Seagate. And then you've got the 1000, which is 1000 gig, AKA one terabyte. LMO35 must be like a part number or something, I don't know. But it seems to be good. It's been turned on 34,000 times apparently and it's had 7,800 hours of usage, which is quite a lot. I think the best cause of action is gonna to be to clean the disc completely, hard reset it. And if that doesn't work when I test, I've also got a 500 gig hard drive that I can test here as well. So we're gonna type in uh, disc part, then we're gonna do list disc, and that's gonna show us just to make sure it was disc seven, if you guys remember. Then we're gonna select the disc seven, and then we're gonna clean. That's gonna completely clean the drive, wipe it. Now we're gonna quickly format it because it's not been formatted. We right click, new simple volume, next, and just pretty much next, all of this. Lovely. I don't actually know if that step is still required, but I do it just in case. I think you can just clean the hard drive and then put it into the Xbox. I could be wrong on that, so please don't take that as advice. Let's give it a test. Okay, we haven't broke it, which is always a result. Do we get anything on the screen? Still nothing on the screen, that's fine. And it's been it's been a good 30 seconds now. So I'm gonna turn it off and we're gonna try the 500 gig. The 500 gig hard drive is in now. Let's turn it on and see if that worked. Nothing. Now what I think we need to do is investigate a little bit around the board to see what's going on. The HDMI port looked fine. I looked at the listing when I purchased this and I knew it wouldn't be the HDMI port, but I'm gonna double check that now. Could still be the retimer, just showing a blank screen. It does happen. This one is the port that we should be worrying about. But again, to be honest with you, it's very sturdy. It's not wriggling at all, and the pins look to be fine on both sides. Can't see any issues there. So that does kind of only leave me with the one option, which is the retimer chip. Potentially for the fifth fix in a row, it could be a retimer. I'm gonna take it under the scope just so we can get a bit of a better look. I'm not gonna start backwards this time, which is exactly what I've done in the video before this. I installed the chip without checking any of this stuff first. So, how are the pins looking? Are we looking good on the pins? Are we looking strong on the pins? That's the question. We're not... Ooh, wait a minute. That pin's a little bit loose for my liking. 
I'm going to check for continuity from this pin. I mean, it's, it is strong, but I, I just saw it wiggle, so I'm a little bit conscious of that now. You can see where the trace is here. It follows, it goes all the way down, and it goes to this side of the field here. So I'm going to put one probe here and one probe on the actual pin itself. Okay, I think, I think we're okay. I'll go to the other side just to make sure as well. Yeah, we're fine. Okay, I think that I think that's all right. And if I put the board up like that, it all looks factory and it all looks secure. Whilst we're here, we're going to test the filters in continuity mode. So I want to hear a beep like this when I check vertically across the filters. They're all good. <coughs> They're all good. This, I think it's called a... I don't know what it's called, I'll be honest. <laughs> it's another type of filter. ESD filter could be like ridiculously wrong. The meter's in diode mode and what I'm going to do is just check what readings I get on each of these capacitors and resistors. I believe these two are resistors and these ones down here are resistors and we have caps here and caps here. I think what I'm looking for is around about 0.6. They're all showing as 0.6. One of them was 0.7. I've lost it now. This this cap here was 0.7 and this cap here is 0.2 but I actually think that's normal. And this scratch here was me. What's that? Is that a... Uh... Oh, it's, it's dust. I think it's safe to say we've done our thorough checks this time. I'm going to remove the retimer chip. This is what this chip is. This chip specifically is a TDP158. I believe the one on the Xbox One S is a TDP159. The 159 on the Xbox One S won't work on this board, but the 158, which is what we have here, will work on the Xbox One S. We're gonna add some more flux to the area now. My nozzle's been clogged, that's why I have to use the actual tube now. And I'm gonna take some leaded solder and mix it with the solder that we've already got on the board to bring down the melting temperature. So let's do that now. I'm gonna change tip. I need to replace the smaller tip of this because that was my favorite one and it's now ruined, so I do need to replace that. Let's clean this up. Here's the new chip that we have. And as you can see, you've got the uh, two spots on the bottom right hand side. You've got one on the chip and you've got one on the board. So this is the orientation that the chip's gonna go. And we're gonna place it right here, but we're gonna heat up the board first with some flux, etc. And I'm also gonna turn it around a little bit, actually. Temperature wise, we're gonna go 450 degrees Celsius now because we've got the leaded solder mixed in with the original solder that was on the board. So it should bring that melting temperature down a little bit. And it's less of a chance of breaking the chip with heat. Airflow speed is 50%, more flux. And here we go. Wait for the solder to wet. There it goes, see it? We're gonna put the chip on, slowly. Oh, shaky today. Try and position it as best I can. There we go, pop, there we go. Oh, it's a little bit. I think we're gonna have ourselves a lot of squeezage in a second, I'm gonna put more flux on. Come back in with the heat. Hopefully watch it pop into place. It looks pretty good at the moment though, as it is. Yeah, I think that's good. So I'm gonna come off the heat. Then I'm gonna come down with the tweezers and push down on the board. And we should see some squeezage here. Get ready, keep your eyes peeled. Oh, look at that. That's a big old bit. And then I come off. Release, let's turn the board around. We're just gonna put some flux on again. It's really hard with the tube. <laughs> I'm just gonna get that dot off. You can tidy up all of those sides as well. Perfect. Rotate the board, because I wanna make it easy for myself. Make sure we have no bridges, I think that's good. Now we're going to clean and check our work. Being honest with you, I don't, I'm, not, I'm actually not that hopeful with this one. It looks a little bit crooked. I could be wrong. Right, how are we looking? Come on, give it to me straight. Okay, that size is not bad at all. We like that. We like that a lot. Okay, nice. That's okay. We're okay with that. This side. Is that a bridge? No, it's not a bridge. I was, I was thinking on the left there, you see the top left pin, that's not a bridge, it's okay. And finally this side, 
yeah, we're good. We're a little bit wonky, a tiny bit wonky, but that I'm okay with, I'm happy with. Let's give it a test. Okay, moment of truth. You can see the absolute cluster of a mess I have here. My flux and everything is just everywhere. The Xbox is barely assembled. I've got the fan, the heat sink, the hard drive and the power and then the power button at the front, which you can't see just down here. Maybe this way is better. I'm gonna push power button on in three, two, one. It's on. I don't know how hopeful I am about this one, if I'm being 100% honest. So I won't be surprised if it doesn't, but it does, let's go, come on, lovely. Stopping me mid-sentence and everything. The E105 error will be because we've completely wiped the hard drive and I need to put the operating spec of the Xbox back on to the hard drive. This is the one terabyte hard drive that I had at the start, but that is a result and I didn't actually expect it to work, seriously. Also, for the few amount of people that were asking, I now have a join button, which you'll see down below. I think the membership is $4.99 a month. It supports me as a creator on the Joey Does Tech channel and you get some funny little emotes. And also when I live stream or you leave a comment down below, there'll be a little JDT icon next to your name. Big shout out to the people who have joined already. Thank you so much, I really appreciate you. And if you enjoyed this one, make sure you check out this video where I try and fix my very first Xbox Series X. Peace. Cheers for watching.